Welcome everyone to the sixth episode of the most interesting people in logistics. Today we have a very special guest. Uh, his name is Chris Jolly, aka the Freight Coach. Chris Jolly, thank you so much for taking your time and being on today's show. Now, nah, Paul, thank you for having me. It's been it's been a blast watching your your stuff and then having you come on my podcast a while back. It's phenomenal. I, I really appreciate what you what you've done. Before we talk about anything else, man, what you've built over this, you know, last year, it's been essentially been a year, man. It's, it's like, it's nothing short of remarkable. I mean, going from nothing to what are you like 15,000 followers yeah. now? Like that's huge, you know? So yeah. props to you on that, man. Thank you, Chris. And I'd like to thank you as well. Cause I'm not sure if I'd be doing this podcast if it wasn't, if it weren't for you. Uh, I love listening to your podcast. You have great content, very interesting people. Uh, if anyone actually wants to learn about logistics and transportation and become knowledgeable, you got to listen to the Freight Coach podcast. Uh, great, just great people come on the show. Chris, you asked the right questions. Uh, and it just, you know, people right now, like if they want to develop in this and make it a career out of this, they, be, they need to educate themselves and you're providing yeah. great content and it's all free, which is just yeah. unbelievable. And I, lo I love it all. And so thanks again for coming on, uh, Chris. If you could tell us who is Chris Jolly and yeah. uh, just, you know, where are you from and how did you get into logistics? Yeah, I am like, I'm from a blue collar family, man. Like I am from a family of truck drivers. I have been in this industry my entire life. I'm from a small farming community in Northern Wisconsin, uh, Osceola, Wisconsin. It's about 60 miles Northeast of Minneapolis. And yeah, man, I've just, I've literally been around this my whole life. And I, I got into brokering. I was a broker for about 10 years. I, I graduated college and I'm like, I got to try something new. You know, you got to get out of the fields of Northern Wisconsin and, and try something else. So I moved out to the big city of Reno, Nevada. I got a job as a freight broker uh, doing carrier sales. And I worked, did that for about six years. I did carrier sales, I did customer sales, and I worked in leadership. And then I got in and worked for a pure startup. You know, like I, when I first started, I was with one of the largest freight brokers out there. And I went and worked for a pure startup. And that's when like, that's when I realized like customers and shippers don't give a shit who you work for. You know, like it, it literally does not matter if you work for the largest freight broker or a three person startup, because like the way that I, that the way that I see it, Paul, now it's like, if somebody asks, who are you with? I'm like, boom, nobody has ruined my reputation yet prior going into it. So like, there was a lot of power in that. And, you know, I, I got in and uh, moved down to Phoenix in, it's been about two years now. And it was right before the pandemic hit and everything else. And I was just going to switch over and do some outside sales for the company I was working with. And, you know, yeah, so it's like, I've been in this industry indirectly, like indirectly my whole life. Like I, I worked, you know, loading trucks in college and everything. So like firsthand transportation experience, it's been like 15 years now. And I just, I love everything about this industry. Like, I don't think people realize how amazing this industry truly is until you're like really in the thick of things. And, you know, it's like, I get it. It's frustrating. I mean, dude, your meme page, I'm sure helps a lot of people through the, the, the challenging times right now, but it's like, rest assured all the content and everything that I put out there, you know, I don't, I don't know everything. I just have a PhD in what not to do in freight because I've tried all of the shortcuts. I've tried it all. And it's cost me a lot of business. Um, I've burnt a lot of relationships just by trying to do all those shady tactics that us brokers love to do out there. And, <laughs> you know, but at the end of the day though, I, I, I just think like, there's so much power in social media. There's so much power in content creation. Like I want to put that information out there for people because again, like I just don't, I, there's a lot of bad actors out there, Paul. And I'm sure you're starting to see this a lot um, where there's a lot of content that's out there that is only out there to have somebody get paid to do. And it's like, well, I mean, every, there's nothing proprietary about freight brokerage, you know, like I don't care who you work for you're all fighting for the same customers and you're all going after the same capacity. Your technology is meaningless unless your truck shows up. Right. So it's like, is there really that big of a difference? There's not, you know, that's my opinion. Okay. That's, that's fascinating. I, I like to hear, you know, like that, that perspective that you've learned about, cause I, I, I hear people talking about technology, how they're going to be, you know, like the new big thing in logistics. Um, but you know, obviously relationships is a huge part of it. And social yeah. media provides us with relationships. I mean, that's what I'm building on and that's what you're building yeah. on a huge network and uh, great stuff. And if you could tell us, why did you leave your previous company? What made you mm -hmm. want to leave your company and 
Tell us that story. To me, it was, you know, like freight brokerage isn't easy. Like, so I don't want anybody to hear what I'm about to say and be like, oh, you know, he's arrogant or anything like that. It was just, I had felt like I had accomplished everything I wanted to, you know, like how many RFP customers can you bring on? You know, like how many cold call conversions to, you know, bidding out for it. How many of those can you bring on before you're like, all right, what's next? Because like in a lot of organizations, that's really it. If you're going to work in sales and like, and I tried the leadership thing and, you know, there's just always been something in me that I wanted to be my own boss. And I wanted to do my own thing, you know? And I, at the time though, I didn't realize that Paul at the time I was going to be like, all right, I got about 10 years in brokerage. I want to go jump over to the trucking company side. I want to learn that. And I want to, you know, do that for five to seven years. And then I figured, you know what, I'll make a senior leadership play somewhere at that time, you know, 17 ish, 20, you know, 20 years in the industry on warehousing and brokerage and in trucking, I think I'd make a pretty appealing uh, candidate. So I had a bunch of interviews lined up to go. And, you know, I've, I've worked for a buddy of mine at my last brokerage job and he, you know, he knew where my head was at with everything. We, we had talked about it. And, you know, so I had a bunch of interviews lined up and then I, uh, on Monday resigned from my job. And by Thursday that I, you've heard of COVID I'm, I'm assuming, um, COVID became a thing. And then by Friday, all the opportunities went away. They're like, Hey, we'll talk to you in July. And I'm like, shit. Okay. Well, I'm out of a job. Um, I got nothing that like, nobody's working, nobody's hiring at this time. So, but I took it as an opportunity though, in the sense of, I got to get involved and be candidate number one everywhere. Like I was on social media, but I wasn't active on it. You know, like I had a profile, but like, yeah. you know, the arrogance of working for a big company is you think everybody knows who you are because like, oh, I worked for the largest, you know, the second largest three letter broker out there. Like you'd be lucky to know me. Couldn't have been farther from the fucking truth. So <laughs> I just got involved on, on LinkedIn primarily right away. But then Paul, I realized how much garbage was out there for content. Like, the, the, the content that I saw was all you have to do is call a shipper. They're going to give you their freight. And then you post a load and then all these carriers fight for your freight. And then you make all this money. They're scam. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, and the, like, not just like these freight schools, but like, there are some big name companies out there posting content like that. And I'm like, that's not the fucking truth at all. Um, <laughs> Cause you know, like, again, like I struggled in sales, just like Everybody, uh, you know, does. And if you're going to sit here and say you don't struggle in sale, uh, sales, you, you've never picked up the phone before in your life. You've never solicited business once. Um, so it's like, I was like, no, no, no. That's just not the way that freight is for me. And that's just not the way that freight is entirely. Like you have to, you have to put yourself out there a lot. So I just started speaking on my experiences because I'm like, all right, this is how I, this is what, what the reality is for me. And you know, I had specialized in like open deck and heavy haul freight for the last four years I was brokering. And I put some content out there regarding that. And then I got a DM later on that day from a, a pretty large broker. They're like, hey, can you talk to one of our sales reps? Like we want to offer this, but admittedly, nobody in our company has any experience doing it. So would you be willing? And I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm like 30 days out of a job. Like, hell, maybe they'll just offer me a job. And, <laughs> um, you know, so I talked to this guy and fortunately though, they never offered me anything, but the light bulb went off as soon as I was done talking to that, Paul. And I'm like, man, if, if this company needs help with sales and operations training, who else needs help with sales and operations training? So I'm like, I'm living off my savings account anyways. So I filed my LLC uh, April 27th of 2020. And I'm like, I'm going for, if, I, if I'm going to spend every dollar I have to my name, I might as well go for broke working for myself. And, you know, cause like back to that thing, like I've been, like, I'm a, it might not sound like it, but I am a man of faith and I've been praying for a long time. Like I want to be my own boss. I want to do my own thing. And voila, the light bulb went off. And I believe God was like, here's your opportunity. Take it. So that's where I just went all in on it. And it was, that's why I started doing all of this was, you know, I just needed to put myself out there and, you know, like I got a job delivering pizzas last summer too, because like I needed money, you know, like I, you know, like when you start a business, in your bootstrapping everything, shit's expensive, you know, especially when you have nothing coming in. So I was like, all right. So I was out there delivering pizza and I was listening to Gary V's podcast. And one of the things that he was talking about on there is if I started a business in 2020, what would I do? And it was, he was, he said, he's like, I would start a podcast. And then how I would structure it is I would be on around the services that I'm providing, but I would have my prospects come on and just talk to them, you know, and then just build. So I'm like, 
all right, boom, done. So like I went home, I, <laughs> I bought my, and my Amazon podcast starter kit. And then I taught myself how to do all of it. I probably watched YouTube for like 30 hours. Cause I'm like, I'm, I, I'm not a tech person, man. Like I, I still restart my computer when things don't work and hope it work, and hope it fixes itself. So that's kind of how I got started with all of that. It's amazing. I, I love that story. Uh, and you said, right. Uh, you moved to Reno after uh, college and now you're based in Phoenix. Yeah. So when did you move? Oh, it was in uh, December of 2019 okay. is when my family. Yeah. So we like, we were literally down here for like three months, man, before I like resigned from my job. COVID was a thing. Like I was like, fuck. Okay. Like yeah. <laughs> we just, I just, we just spent a lot of money moving down here and everything else. But like at the end of the day, man, like, I don't want to sound like a motivational meme, but like though I perform my best when my back's against the wall, when yeah. I don't have uh, options. You know, like, and, and that's, what's crazy is when you're like out there building something, when you have a plan B, your plan A is going to fail, you know? Yeah. So it's like, that was my only option during that time. It's like, I have to make this work. I have a family to support and you won't stop me, especially, you know, and it, like, and it wasn't easy, man. Like it was probably four months in business before I got my first client. And I was taught you know, like cold calling. I was putting out daily content. I was putting out podcasts. I was doing everything. It was probably for a four consulting months. business, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you, you were cold calling for prospects to get to your consulting. Uh, yeah. Business. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you were doing podcasts on the side, uh, alongside daily videos on LinkedIn. Okay. I was doing my podcast. I was engaging with people on like, I was partaking in anything yeah. I possibly could to get my name out there. When did you come out with your first podcast? Uh, man, I want to say June 26th or June 27th of 2020. Okay. Was and now you're in episode like 142, 43? No, 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 120. One, sorry, go for it. 120, 125 got released this morning, but I have probably 135 episodes recorded because like I bank a lot of my content and anybody out there, if you're creating, if you're wanting to create content, I will tell you this right now, just record when you don't, like, don't, don't try and plan it, you know, like grab your cell phone and record and have content out there. And it's amazing how you can repurpose it and get it out there. So I would say that like, you know, cause that was one thing that I learned early on with everything, Paul with like, especially with my daily videos is it's like, I baked it into my schedule. And then there were some days, like it was on like a Saturday and I'm like, fuck, I got 17 things in my head right now. Boom. I just sat down on zoom. I recorded myself talking about all of this stuff. And then sure. I like, I, I edited everything myself and I still edit all my own stuff where I just went and just laid it all out there. So it's like, you have the time to create. It's just not like you can't like perfection doesn't exist. You know, like my, my first videos are terrible, man. Like my first podcast, terrible. My first probably 50, 60 podcasts are terrible, but you know, like, that's the thing is it's like, that's that repetition that comes along with it. The more and more you do it, the better you, you will get. It's like, yeah. it's like the law of uh, averages or whatever it is. Yeah, definitely. I'm working on it right now. This is my sixth episode. And I just, yeah. I feel more confident and better every time I do it. And I know just like getting the at bats and, you know, just continuously doing. And, and I, I love getting, you know, like when we talk, like I'm learning, people that are listening are learning. There's yeah. so much knowledge out there that I could gain from and others could gain from. And just knowing your experience uh, and just, it's, it's, I just love it. I love the fact that yeah. we're here talking right now and I'm in Poland, you're in Phoenix, Arizona. We're talking logistics. Uh, so to continue the topic, what are your future plans? Like, do you have an idea of where you want this to go? Yeah, 1000%, man. I will be the Joe Rogan equivalent for the blue collar industry. I, I, I'm not just going to start and stop in trucking. Like there's so like, man, at the end of the day, we got to make like, I, like I'm from a blue collar family. We got to make the blue collar sexy again. We got to get that pride back in and working in the trades and everything else. Cause like, man, that's, that's how I got my start. Like that's the best thing my dad ever gave me in life is it's nothing other than a work ethic. He taught me how to create something out of nothing with my hands, you know, like, and then that, like that mentality that comes along with the blue collar industries, it's like, Man, you're not above any job. Like, like I said, man, like I have two college degrees and I went and delivered pizzas last year. Pride doesn't fucking exist. You have to do what you got to do to support and provide for your family. You know what I mean? Especially yeah. if you're going to start a business, you know, where you don't have a family or somebody just throwing money at you, you got to do what you got to do. And, 
here's the thing. Nobody who's done it or is doing it will ever judge you for that. Nobody who's ever, it's always the people who are doing less than you in life who want to try and throw shade at you in those moments where it's like, man, I'd, I'd go fucking shovel shit right now if I had to, to put a meal on my kid's table. That's more painful than what anybody could ever say to me is my kid hungry. That's more painful than what anybody could, any of these trolls online or anything like that who want to talk shit. None of that stuff matters to me, you know, because at the end of the day, my, my family and making sure they're taken care of means the most because one day, you know, not to get like morbid, but we're all going to be on our deathbeds one day. None of these motherfuckers are going to be out there next to me. My son and my wife are going to be there. Nobody else. So why does everything yeah. like that? It's all noise. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's all noise. I totally agree. Uh, and I, I did see something on LinkedIn recently that you're coming out with a new podcast series. Is that correct? Yes. So we're, we're developing that. Like I'm, you know, a lot as this media thing really starts to take off. Um, and that like, again, like that's, what's crazy about all of this. And you're experiencing it with social media and it, like everything started because I bought a laptop and an, Am an Amazon starter kit, $1,400. That's what everything was all in. That's how I started all of this. And, you know, so anybody out there who thinks starting a business is expensive, you're wrong. It's like, you literally just need a laptop. Or if you have a cell phone, yeah. like literally, dude, you started, you started freight caviar off of your, off of your cell phone. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, you don't need a massive investment and you just got to start. So it's like, I now see the power in all of this in media. I want to bring the reality, the continued reality of this industry to it. So like I have a LinkedIn live show that I'm doing every Monday now where we're like, we're kind of talking about the ports right now. Cause that's just a fucking nightmare what's going on out there, but it's going to be more current events. It's going to be like more realities of people who are in the day-to-day -day operations and not the, the C-suite view of, oh um, yeah, the drivers are important. And you know, like that same, just, it's just, it's just recycled garbage in my opinion, where it's like, I want to talk to the drivers. I want to talk to the frontline workers. I want to talk to the people who are actually involved in the day to day. I want to bring that message out there because that resonates to a lot more people than not. And so there's, there's that portion of it. And then I'm also working on another one. It, it's called grow my fleet. And that is to give out and show a roadmap to people on how to start a trucking company where they don't need to go and pay somebody to teach them how to do this. Like, again, there are, there are people out there who've already built it and done it. And they were going to graciously give you their time to show you how to do it. And then it's like, furthermore, like you got to, after you get your business started, like I've a hundred, like it would be, <laughs> it would be very hypocritical for me to say that I'm not a fan of coaching as somebody who is, you know, consulting and, and teaching where it's like, once you get everything established, then you work with a co a consultant. You know, like on, on the trucking company side, I got to give a shout out to my friend, Adam Wingfield at Innovative Logistics Group. Like he's got an, a massive platform put together for people to utilize, you know, and he's done it. He's been in the industry for 20 years. And, you know, again, it's like bringing this ecosystem of people together where we all want to help each other. And that like, that's one of the big things with you, Paul, is it's like, man, I just want to like, I want people to listen to my stuff and, and actually use it. You know what I mean? And that's the same with me, with my content. And a lot of the people that I associate myself with is it's like, man, we're just building this ecosystem of information for people to utilize and apply, you know? Cause like, that's the end goal is it's like, it's just like education. You have a phenomenal education with a, with a humor spin to it. And, but you know, it's like, but th that's my big thing with everything that I put out there is it's like, I just want people to utilize it and apply it and then make money off of it. And I don't want them to pay me, you know, like I'll, I'll find another way, you know? So. Yeah, I love that. Uh, the funny thing is about my memes. I actually had a friend and I was like training him to be a broker. And I literally was like, I was going through every meme I had and I was telling him the story behind every meme. And then yeah. when I, when he got into like, you know, making calls and covering loads, he was laughing because he was like, Paul, like I knew this was going to happen because you showed me this meme and it's like, I could actually educate yeah. someone off the meme. So yeah, but what you're doing is great. Definitely helping the, the community. And it's such a large industry. Supposedly a third of our GDP is logistics. So yeah. massive. There's thousands, hundreds and thousands of people that work in logistics on a day-to-day -day basis. So just getting a small percentage of those people interested in it is already huge makes a big well, difference. That's the thing. Yeah. I mean, we got to keep like, no one's going to fix this industry, but us, you know, like nobody's going to attract that next generation of talent, but us. Yeah. And it's like, 
I mean, I'm 35 years old. What's important to me doesn't even trip a 22 year old's radar. You know what I mean? So it's like, we have to gear the industry towards that next generation of people to get them in, yeah. you know, like I know everybody's you know, oh, driver shortages and all this, you know, like mainstream media just ruins everything and puts gasoline and a fire on it and fucking explodes it. But it's like, do we need more drivers? 1000% we do. But how do we get more drivers? We have to appeal to that 20 to 22 year old out there. Oh, 100%. They're not, you know, where are they at? They're on social media. They're yeah. not, they're not looking at indeed.com or some job board somewhere. Yeah. They're on social media, yeah. you know? So it's like, how do we get them excited? That's how we're going to get the next generation of freight brokers. The next, it's like, because there's so many different components to our industry. That's where it needs to be. It needs to be on social media. Yeah. That's where people are going to get interested about our industry. And again, no one's going to come in here and fix this, but us. So yeah, if I were an 18 year old right now, I would get a CDL and take an online college course and be driving a truck around the United States, you know, visiting states and learning at the same time. Like it's manageable. It's possible. Yeah. You could get a degree and be driving a truck, making great money. So it's, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of young men and women out there, Paul, where college isn't an option or it's not on the table for them. And again, like it's not nothing against any other trade job or blue collar job out there, but it's like, if you're going to get in and be an apprentice somewhere and you can apprentice for like two years, why are you going to change at like 21, 22 when you're already making like 50 grand, 60 grand a year, you know, like you're not going to jump ship at that point. So it's like, again, we got to, we got to think of a way, like, how do we get people in? And it's like, you know, say, like you can get a CDL at 18. All right. You just can't cross state lines. There's got to be a way that they can structure it. Yeah, because it, the, the, <laughs> the big, yeah, the big hangup is on uh, um, insurance and stuff like that. So it's like, all right, so how do we structure this to where it's like a, you know, I always think of it to me, it's like, it's very similar to like an airline pilot. You know, like you got to start off as a first officer until you hit a certain amount of hours, then you can apply to be a captain. So it's like, how do we do that and structure it in the driver community to where we get them in? They, after they hit a certain amount of miles, then they can start going a little bit further and then get that three year driving experience in it before they can start going cross country and stuff. So I know that recently a lot of companies are bringing, bringing in drivers from Eastern Europe to train up for the CDL. I have, I have a follower who is driving a truck around Eastern Europe, like Poland, Germany, Scandinavia. And I just saw, I was following him because he was, he was Polish. We messaged for a little bit and I saw that he's in Chicago and it turns out he's getting a CDL right now because yeah. uh, a trucking company based out of Chicago, that's like a Polish owned trucking company has like the visa program. He applied for the visa program for the company and they took care of the whole visa. They're training him and he, he landed in Chicago a few weeks ago. He's, he's like a week away from getting a CDL because they're expediting the, pro expediting the process to get drivers out there. I mean, he drove all over Europe, so he, he yeah. knows how to drive a truck. Uh, and I know a different company based out of St. Louis that I'm connected with reached out to me to ask me if I know anyone from Eastern Europe that would want to drive a truck in the States because they have the whole visa program mm -hmm. set up. So like, that's a, I think that's one great way to get more drivers on the road as soon as possible. But definitely just reaching out to younger younger kids that, you know, they don't need to take $100,000 in student debt. Uh, they don't, they don't right. need it because they, they probably don't even know what they want to do. But yeah, driving a truck would be great, not only for the economy, but great for themselves as well. So yeah, absolutely, man. I, I agree with that. And I think like, again, that's, I mean, that's exactly what needs to be done is get people out there, get people excited about our industry. And, you know, that's the, that's the beauty of the United States of America, man. It's a land of opportunity. There's a ton of opportunity here. If you want to make money in this country, you can like nothing yeah. stopping you, but you, I don't care what anybody says. Like legitimately, I started everything in the middle of the pandemic with no money, you know? And it's like, the only thing that's going to stop you is you at the end of the day, yeah. you're the only one stopping yourself. So it's like, yeah, I mean, I love it. Get people in here, get people like help us, you know, in any way we can, the visa program, whatever that looks like. Yeah. And with your podcast now and your consulting company, yeah, you're able to, to live your life, pay your bills. Not a problem. You're, it, you don't it's need another getting there. job. Yeah. I don't, I don't need another job yet. You know? So it's like, that's the thing though, is it's like, it's growing, man. Like the, like, that's the, like, I think the biggest misconception and like the reason why people stop is because like, they think that they're just going to like become a millionaire overnight, you know? And like, 
again, it's, it's all in the content who you follow. Like I, dude, I follow Andy Frisella. He's the real AF podcast. Yeah, I've been listening to those episodes that you posted. Yeah. I've been listening to him religiously for since essentially I started my company. And you know, the thing is, is it's like a guy like that has built multiple nine figure companies and he's from self-admittedly a rural town and nobody cares, Missouri and everything else. And he's done it. And then he, like, he's laid out the steps that you need to follow. And it's like guys like him. And then like Gary V, for example, like I followed him a lot, but the beauty, like the, the reason why I love Gary V so much, Paul is he'll tell you, he's like, listen, my content's only going to get you so far. You actually have to apply. He's like, I don't want you to listen to me forever. Cause that means that you're not doing what I'm telling you to do. And again, so it's like I, he, Gary V kind of got me going, but like Andy Frisella's content in the real AF has kept me going. If that makes sense, yeah, yeah. because like talking about everything that you'll face, you know, just like the constant getting punched in the mouth, you oh, yeah. know, like of that comes along with starting your own company, but it's also just knowing like, all right, if this person like, you know, and he'll, he'll, he'll even talk about it. It's like, I didn't make money for like 12 years, you know, like I reinvested in my, and like, and he just lays out what you need to do. So it's like, that helps a lot. And I think like, that's the hardest thing with anything. Like the hardest thing is always going to be to start. But it, it's going to be like that mental battle that you have to go through every single day when you don't want to make your calls, when you don't want to send your emails, when everything's imploding around you, you know, like those are the moments that are going to prepare you for the future more than the wins, you know, like everybody, like, of course, celebrate the wins, but you don't learn anything when, you know, dude, like here's, here's a prime example. When your trucks are showing up on time as a freight broker, you know, you like, you fucking take your foot off the gas because you just think like, that's the way it's going to be every time. Yeah. When did, like for me, when I was brokering freight, my market share never increased when my truck showed up on time. You want to know when they increased? When a load got stolen, when a driver went MIA, when there was damage to a product, because I was there with my customer through the thick and thin of it all. That's when my market share increased because they knew they could trust me then. That's so like, and that was in the shittiest of times, you yeah. know, like I'm, dr I'm dreading like, oh fuck, this is a, this is a hundred thousand dollar claim coming my way. <laughs> like I'm going to lose my job. But the thing was, is it was like, those were the moments that were preparing me for when things were going right. You know, it's like, all right, cool. I got to keep my pipeline full. It's all of those little things. And then it's the exact same thing in building my business is it's never when I'm landing new accounts. It's never when things are going right. It's always when things are going wrong. You know, like we were talking about before we started recording, like I did an entire LinkedIn live segment and my mic wasn't working. I like that is catastrophic to somebody who creates content. But yeah. again, as a business owner, I had to take the ownership of it. That's on me. Everything starts and stops with me as, as an entrepreneur. So it's like, all right, what do I need to do now differently? And like we were talking, like when you jump from different streaming platforms and everything else, sometimes your microphone auto defaults back to not working. So it's like, all right, cool. I'm going to implement that little step now to where that won't happen again. You know, so it's like, there's so many intangible um, things that you're going to experience even brokering freight or starting a company and everything else. But the, the biggest thing is, is, it's like, don't let those, those losses, perceived losses ruin your life, you know, cause like the sun's going to rise tomorrow. You're going to have to get up and you're going to have to push through. You need to block the noise and stay positive. And I know that you've been traveling a good amount. Now you're in San Antonio, you're, you're yeah. meeting up and you go to the gym every morning, you're disciplined. Yes. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about your schedule and how you stay disciplined, what motivates you and all that good stuff? So like when I first started, like, dude, you're, you're like the first person I'm ever, ever seen. Like, I've lost like 50 pounds over my first 20 months in business. Um, wow. And that was because like, I, I had to create a schedule because like when you start a company, you don't have a schedule. You know, wow. like you don't know what the hell you're doing 99% of the time. Even when your business is succeeding, you still don't know what you're doing. No. So I was like, all right, what can I control? And I knew like, I knew I needed to do something different because I like, you know, a big thing, man, like, I wasn't happy. Like I was drinking nonstop and, you know, before I kind of started doing all this. So I knew, you know, I was probably like two months in to my business. I'm like, all right, I got to lay off the sauce for the foreseeable future. I, so like I went sober and I started going to the gym every single morning. And I was like, all right, this is my structure now. Like I have to do this every single day where it's like, all right, I'm gonna go to the gym. And you know, generally, you know, like my alarm goes off at 4 a.m. So I get in about 4.45 in the morning. 
and I get my workout in every single day. And that, that's my routine. And then like, and I know that when I do that, that's the hardest thing I'll do throughout the day, you know, cause like nobody's going to reach through the computer and punch me in the face. So therefore <laughs> this is going to be the hardest thing, you know? So like I did that and then I was like, all right, I got to create now, like what's my schedule look like? And then early on was, it was like, all right, I got to put up my daily post. Then I got to network for three or four hours or five hours, whatever I need to do. I got to introduce myself to literally everybody in this industry, you know, and I still to this day, even though, you know, like as my brand grows, I still feel like 1% of this industry knows who I am. So I like, that's my still in my routine. It's like, I got to get out there. I got to network. I got to put out content and I got to be in front of people. So it's like, it's creating that discipline because like motivation's bullshit. All right. Like at the end of the day, motivation is bullshit. It gets you feeling good for a little bit. It's just like drinking, man. Like you feel phenomenal for five hours and you wake up with a hangover. It's, just, yeah. it's the exact same thing with motivation. Motivation wears off. You have to find these things and do them every single day. And it's the little things, Paul, that nobody thinks about that you literally have to show up and do every single day. And when you can master that, master the minute details, that's when like you're going to start seeing a little bit of progress, in my opinion. And that's where the opportunities start to come in because like no one's going to find you. All right. Like nobody's going to find you. You have to do everything to get people to notice you. And it's the same thing when you started Freight Caviar, man. Nobody knew who you were right away, but you showed up every single day, multiple times a day. You became that because you didn't give up, you know, and you did the same thing. It was like, you throw out your first post. Like when I first started posting, I was lucky, lucky to get five engagements on it. Lucky. And even dude, I was probably 10 months. Like, I think realistically it was March of this year, almost 10 months in doing stuff every single day, putting out multiple podcasts a week, multiple forms of content before I started to feel a little bit of the needle turn of, all right, there's some momentum here, you know, no. 10 months. And that's just, you know, and that's the thing is like, it's creating that discipline, creating that routine of this is what I'm going to do every single day. Because you know, there's dude, and I'm sure you do that. You, you realize this now too. There's going to be days where you're going to post a meme. There's going to be like 50,000 views on it. It's going to look awesome. But then the next one you put out might get like 2000, you know, no. like that's just the reality of social media. There's days where I'll post stuff out. I'll get five, six, seven, 800 forms of engagement. And then the next one will get like 200, but no. oh, well, I'm going to post tomorrow no matter what. Oh yeah, totally. Great stuff. Uh, Chris, I just like talking to you, picking your brain on this. And it just, it's really interesting to hear everything you have to say. And uh, I, mean, I mean, I want you to, to grow this and, you know, crush it. I think this is, no, this is the that. beginning of something tremendous. And you've shown that, it, you're, you know, you can learn a lot. You can educate people. You're helping the community, uh, first of all. And yeah. It's all free, you know, like your content, you're not no one. obviously you can do consulting with you, but the content that you're putting out, that's, that's yeah. uh, amazing it's stuff just, about it. To me, Paul, there's so much that like, how could I charge somebody to tell them that they need an LLC or they need to fill out their MC and their DOT? And I'm like, that's all, that's all out there for free. Anyways, how can I take that and then try and package that up and sell that? Like, I think that's the worst form of business that you could possibly do, you know, where it's like, Hey, listen, um, here's all this information for free, get started. Then let's talk. Let's talk when you're in the thick of things, because a lot of the training that True. I do, it's all situational stuff, man. Like, what do you do the first time a customer comes at you and says, I see you're posting my freight, um, for $500 less than you quoted me. What's this, you know? And like, there's so many situations. What do you do the first time that a driver is like, I'm holding this load hostage unless you pay me $500 right now. Oh, and then you're going to sign this NDA that says I didn't do it. And you're not going to talk. How do you handle those situations? You know, like there's no course out there. That's going to teach you that. All the courses just want $500 up front. Exactly. I, you know, and again, I'm not calling anybody out. I'm not saying I'm not knocking anybody's hustle, but if you're out there charging somebody to set up a business like to set up their MC number and their DOT number, and then you're not providing any value out of that. That's some bottom feeder bullshit, in my opinion. You know, yeah. like you're literally taking advantage of good intentions of others. And I despise that. So stay tuned, rest assured, your freight coach here is going to be putting out a lot of stuff out there um, that has all of that for people to do for free. And it's going to be 
with individuals who are in charge of that at the federal level. So take it from the source. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to, to hearing that content. And uh, Chris, just to wrap it up here, how do people connect with you? Uh, what's yeah. the best way? No, absolutely. Uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, just search for the freight coach or my name is Chris Jolly. Um, you can connect with me on there. Um, you can email me direct Chris at the freight coach.com. Um, I, I try my absolute best to like, I'll respond to you. It might not just be within five minutes. I'm definitely going to get back um, on that. And then my podcast is available on iTunes and Spotify. New episodes are released every Tuesday and Friday. It's coffee with the freight coach. Do me a favor, subscribe to it, comment on it and share it out there. It's uh, literally what it's grown into in this amount of time has only been because like that organic movement, kind of like what you're experiencing with freight caviar, man. Like you're not paying for advertising, you know, like your, yours no. is all organic. And that's just what, like, it, it's only grown because of the people that have engaged with it. And, you know, if that takes me talking about all my fuck ups, I'll gladly, I got, I got a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Chris, thank you so much. Do you have any last words? Um, you know, I, I guess I know like this, it's a challenging market right now, but rest assured, this is just the reality of freight, you know, like there's market shifts, there's back and forth to it. it. It's just part of the game and, you know, just don't let it get to your customer, you know, like do your absolute best. Don't just preach relationships online, actually execute upon them. I know it's easier said than done but there are plenty of carriers out there who want to work with quality brokers. All right. They're out there. I know they're out there. I lived the life for 10 years. So that's my biggest piece of advice. Thank you, Chris. And that is a wrap for episode six.